Okay, so welcome to grade 12 University Physics. Um, these lessons are going to be one lesson for each of your worksheets. Okay, this is a package that I gave you um, in class or online. And each lesson we follow at the top. Today I'm going to go over math skills, which are important in science. Right, but also make sure you read through the syllabus at the beginning of the sheet. And if you have any questions about what we're going to learn or how you're going to be marked, then let me know. All right, so for math skills, the important math skills in science are, well, the big ones are going to be significant digits and unit conversion. Okay, because I'm not going to really go over those at all other than today, but I expect you to be using them all semester throughout this course. So let's start with significant digits. First of all, why do we have significant digits? Like, what does it matter if I measure the length of this whiteboard and let's say I determine it's 1.51 meters, but someone else uses a better measuring device to measure the length of the whiteboard and they determine the length is 1.512 meters. Okay, well, they have different significant digits. This has one, two, three, and this has one, two, three, four significant digits. Which number is better? Well, this number is better. It's more accurate. Significant digits lets you know the accuracy of measurements. And measurements are extremely important in science because you make measurements in any experiment and you need to do experiments. Although you can use really advanced mathematics to come up with new laws, we don't know if those laws apply to our universe unless you have experimentation to prove it. And you need to have accurate experiments, meaning scientists, when they prove something, they make sure they have a better chance of winning the lottery every day for the next week before they're wrong in what they've proven. So that's how accurate they need to be with all of their analysis. Okay, in university, you'll learn way more about how to calculate how accurate you are and your errors involved in experiments, but the beginning is significant digits. So let's go over significant digits again. We did it in grade 11. So let's try some review here. First of all, all non zero digits are significant from going off of the first page. You can follow if you like, and if you want to add your own notes here, if I say something that sort of just clicks or something you want to remember you can add them in there on all non-zero digits are significant so if we had the number 126.57 that has a total of five significant digits next one in a measurement with a decimal zero placed before other digits are not significant okay so let's go over this again 0.0023 those digits and certainly those digits are not significant. If you're ever unsure, the best thing is to change it into scientific notation. Do you remember how to do that? So in this case, if we move the decimal to the right three places, we get 2.3. But then that's a multiple by a factor of 10. In this case, since we moved it to the right three places, that's minus 3. So there it is in scientific notation. And you can just count these digits, 1, 2. Okay, another example, I'm just going to skip to the, the last point in this section, is measurements with zeros at the end have an indeterminate number of significant digits. So, for example, if you write 3400, zero, zero, how many significant digits is that? Two, three, four? It's hard to tell. In fact, when you're writing a proper report for a lab or an experiment that you do, you should never write this number. Well, for the one point, I didn't put any units, but for another point, the accuracy isn't conveyed here. You should write one of the three following things. You should write 3.4 times 10 to the 3, or 3.40 times 10 to the 3, or 3.400 times 10 to the 3. All those numbers are the exact same, but these three specifically let me know how accurate my measurements are. Right, this one obviously being the most accurate. Right. Now, usually if you are given a number, say, like 
210, it's best to assume the worst case scenario. So it's best to assume you're only accurate to two digits. However, when you're working through problems in your textbook, your textbook will take that as three digits, just so you know. Uh, next, zeros placed between non-zero digits are significant. Yeah, so if you had 304, that zero counts. I mean, again, think of it in terms of scientific notation. That would be 0, 3.04 times 10 to the power of 2. 1, 2, 3. So that zero definitely counts. Next, zeros placed after other digits to the right of a decimal are significant, for sure. Right? So 4.5. 0, 0, 0. So this would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits. I mean, why write all those zeros? Why not just write 4.5? Well, you don't write just 4.5 because if your measurement is this accurate, why would you say it's not? Now, whenever you're taking measurements, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, this pretty much tells you that you are certain about all of these digits, and it's the last one you're not too sure about. So what does that mean? If I made this measurement, let's say the length of something in meters, okay, if I write 4.5 meters, I'm saying I'm sure about this, but I don't know about that. It could be 4.6, it could be 4.2, 4.8, I'm not sure about that one. But this person, did a very good job in their measurements. And they're saying it's 4.500, that last zero I'm not too sure about. Could be a two. Okay, so your last digit is always your, your estimated or uncertain digit. But we'll talk more about that when we do error analysis in tomorrow's lesson. All right, let's go over rules when you're actually doing calculations with significant digits. So there's two rules, there's your addition and subtraction rules, and there's your multiplication and division rules. Now when you're adding or subtracting, you're not actually counting significant digits, you're counting the number of decimal places. Okay, so for example, if you look at the back, uh, part A for question one says you're going to do 463.66 plus 29.2 plus 0 0.17. All right, so this is an addition problem. There's no multiplication or division. So what we're going to do is we're not going to look at significant digits, we're gonna look at decimal places. So this one has two decimal places, this one and this two. Now your answer should be only be good as your weakest link. In this case, one. So your answer should have only one decimal place. So you should write it as 493.0. Now, on your calculator, you do get another digit there, but we don't know. And this is a measurement. We're saying this is the digit we're unsure about. We can't not add another one. Right? It may seem like by adding all the digits on your calculator, you're being more accurate. You're not. You're conveying sort of false information by doing so, by saying your measurement's more accurate, and by giving the misinformation as to which digit is the uncertain one. All right, so this is the best way to write it. Now, if you're doing multiplication or division, in that case, you want to look at significant digits. So let's look at um, C. So C does um, 2.6 times by 42.2. Right now, when you do that, well, how many significant digits does this number have? Two. And this one? Three. So your answer still should only be as good as your weakest link. So your answer should only have two significant digits. Now, when you punch this into your calculator, if you do um, 2.6 times 42.2, you get 109.72. But it should only have two significant digits, and this is where some people get a little bit confused. So if you're only going to keep the two digits, what do you round to 11? That's ridiculous. 11 is nowhere near 110. No, you should definitely not. Don't change the order of magnitude of your answer. To fix this, again, 
we're going to use scientific notation. This is the great thing about scientific notation. We can convey our accuracy and the proper order of magnitude using scientific notation. So we'll write 1.1 times 10 to the power of 2. So this lets us know it is about 110. And this lets us know the accuracy to two significant digits. Okay. All right. So let's try the other parts in question one. That's all I want to talk about for that. But question two says convert. Converting units is extremely important. Because in so many questions, I will not give you um, the base SI unit. Just won't. Right? I might say light has a wavelength in nanometers. And well, what's nanometers? You can't just throw nanometers into your calculations. You need to know that nanometers is um, 10 to the minus 9 meters. Okay, you also have micrometers, which we will be using, 10 to the minus 6 meters, millimeters, 10 to the minus 3 meters. There's your base unit. Okay, um, kilometers, which is 10 to the plus 3. Okay, um, megameters, um, gigameters, terameters, okay? You can keep going up, you can keep going down this way to picometers, okay? But you should be able to convert back and forth. Now, a trickier problem is when you're not just converting one unit, but you're converting two units, okay? It's like 35 meters per second. Okay. Now, usually you won't go from meters per second to kilometers per hour. You'll do it the other way, because in all your calculations, you want to put in your base units. But usually if a question gives you information in kilometers per hour, after you convert it into meters per second and do all your calculations, you usually give an answer in the same units that was given in the question. So then you would convert it back into kilometers per hour. So how do I convert this? Now, I wrote it like this instead of writing it like this, which I would usually write it like this. But I'm going to write it as a clear fraction there so you can see how we're going to change it. And in fact, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to multiply this number by 1, but different ratios of 1. For example, let's look at the meters. Now, I want to change meters into kilometers. Well, how many meters are in a kilometer? There's a thousand. So you have a thousand meters in a kilometer. I need to write a ratio here, which is equal to 1, so that I'm not changing anything. But what I can have is I can have a 1,000 meters here and 1 kilometer here. This is the same as that. So this just has a value of 1. So multiplying this by 1 doesn't change anything. The only thing I'm changing are the units. And I placed meters on the bottom, on the um, denominator, so the numerator, very for a very specific reason. And that reason is... So they cancel like this. Okay, meters on the numerator, meters on the denominator, cancel. If I had switched this and put meters on the top, that would give me meters squared per kilometer, which is not something I'm interested in. All right, so now I'm taking 35 and I'm essentially dividing by 1,000. And that'll give me kilometers per second. But I don't want kilometers per second. I want kilometers per hour. So let's change seconds into, let's do minutes first. So I want to multiply by 1 again. But how many seconds are in a minute? There's 60. Okay, so I can have a ratio of 1 where we have seconds and minutes. But do you want seconds on the numerator or the denominator? You can want it on the numerator so that it cancels with this one. So we have 60 seconds for every minute. And that second will cancel. All right, so now we've multiplied by 16, divided by 1,000, and we have units of kilometers per minute. Still not quite what I'm looking for. I want per hour. So let's change minutes per hour. We'll do the same thing. Multiply by 60 minutes per one hour, and our minutes will cancel. And you get kilometers per hour. So what we're doing is multiplying by 60 twice, which is 3,600 and divided by 1,000. If you're multiplying something by 3,600 and dividing by 1,000, it's the same thing as just multiplying by 3.6, which is probably what a lot of you remember in um, grade 11, 
right? Change meters per second to kilometers per hour multiplied by 3.6. It's a good thing to remember. You can do your calculations quickly, but you should know, you should understand why you're doing that. All right, and I mean, it works the reverse way too. If you want to change kilometers per hour to meters per second, you can divide by 3.6. But again, you should know why you're doing that. So when you do all this, and you take 35, you go get 126 kilometers per hour. Okay, now, very important. This has two significant digits. You shouldn't change that to two significant digits. The reason why is you're multiplying by exact ratios, right? Exact ratios. Right? So technically these all have infinite significant digits because there's exactly, there's, there's no estimation there. There's no uncertainty there, right? The, um, the definition says there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Not no, about 1,000, no, exactly 1,000. Okay, so you should leave it as your answer that you get here. Okay, within reason, of course. All right. The last question, if you haven't already done so, um, please join onto the Google Classroom. And you're going to have to um, ask me for that code because it changes every year, and so I'm not going to put tell you in the video. It might not also be the same one that's on your worksheet. So... It will be posted in our classroom, or I will send out an email to your Google account. Some way I'll tell you what the code is, so make sure you log on to that um, Google Classroom. Okay. Uh, the challenge question. Now, this one's interesting. I've talked a lot about accuracy. But let me also talk about precision. There's a difference between accuracy and precision. Let's take a target. Let's do some archery here. Let's say one person shoots the target and they hit all in these places right there, all together. They're very precise, meaning no matter how many times they do this experiment, they're getting about the same value. They're not very accurate because okay? that's the goal. So in grade 11, you probably remember dropping a, a tennis ball and then determining um, what the gravitational field strength was or acceleration due to gravity and it's supposed to be 9.8 so this is your goal 9.8 right here or 9.81 meters per second squared they're not getting 9.81 but they get all everything they get is within the same area so they're very precise if someone else shoots it there they're very accurate now you can be precise and accurate if all your shots are right in the middle but let's look at what this means mathematically so two people do an experiment. You have one person who got G, the value of G, to be 9.654 meters per second squared. And another person got the value of G to be 9.79 meters per second squared. So which is more accurate and which is more precise? Could be the same one, but in this case it's not. If you want to look at accuracy, you're looking at significant digits. This person was more accurate because it's this digit they were uncertain about, whereas this group was uncertain about this digit. So this one is more accurate. However, this group is much closer to the theoretical value of 9.81. So this group here is more precise. So that's the difference between precision and accuracy. All right, so that's all I wanted to go over. In today's lessons, tomorrow we're going to do error analysis, right? And then we're going to move into the physics, right? Learning like physics. Okay.